got an incredible resume. Looks like he's done a lot of things. Looks like he's a person of prominence. But what gets me is the NAACP. I'd like to have somebody from the NAACP come on my show on Wednesday nights. I've got some spots open. They can come on. And I want you guys to talk to me about it. Why is the NAACP, uh, are they quick to jump on the race card and create even more division? You know, I'll tell you from experience, you know, I've got friends, and I'm not going to be one of those guys who says, well, i got black friends. i got friends. i got people that I get along with of all races and colors and creeds and religious backgrounds. And what separates my friends from people that are associates who I get along with but probably don't uh, count as friends and then people that I don't hang out with is the fact that, uh, you know, whether or not you're a dick or not. If you're a dick, I don't hang out with you. You know, and here, here's a clue. There's a lot of there's a lot of people of not of color, white people. I don't hang out with because they're dicks. <laughs> you know, when I grew up, uh, I was taught to take people at uh, take people at who they are, and you can't judge or or you can't uh, uh, judge someone else just by uh, who they are religiously or who they are as far as. Uh, skin color or anything else, you, you got to take them one at a time. So I don't know. Me and this belt guy might even get along. But I'd like to talk to him or somebody from the NAACP and say, you know, what's the deal here? We, you know, I, I just don't get, he, in his description of things that happened, I don't get anywhere in there where he says, you know, what am I being detained for? He just didn't say anything. And I'm sure the Beverly Hills police would have said, well, you meet the description of somebody who just robbed a bank. And he said, well, hey, I just came from, a, from over here. This is who I am. And maybe he said, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, what reason do I have to rob a bank when I'm uh, already rich? I mean, he's already well off. Uh, it sounds to me like he just clammed up and didn't say nothing, just let it roll, simply for this, you know, to see how far it would go so he could use it to, to sensationalize what happened to him, that all cops are racist. And on that point, if all cops are racist and you can't trust them, then why on earth would you want to give up your guns? Why on earth would you be anti-Second Amendment, telling me that only cops should have guns, and then turn right around and throw cops under a bus saying that they're all racist? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, the liberal mindset makes no sense to me at all. Give up your guns. Only cops should have guns. All, gun, all cops are crooks. All, all cops are, are corrupt. Well, wh why on earth then would you not want to be armed? <laughs> I don't get it. Absolutely don't get it. Let's get him off the Steve Marmel page. He's uh, probably one of the top race baiters on Facebook right now. About every... Uh, about every post and meme that he's had in the last two weeks has been, uh, uh, you know, about race. And of course, he's a white guy, so he's got the whole, uh, what do they call it, uh, white guilt going on, I think. So he's going to, uh, he goes over the top. He's If you haven't liked his page, if you're a liberal or, or if you're out there and you're listening and you're a conservative, like his page. It's just got some great debate going on there. He's yet to ban me, which, you know, I got respect for him for that because he hasn't banned me. And I've had some very spirited debates with some of the liberals on there. Of course, a liberal, just like uh, my friends over at the Donner Party, they do the same thing. They'll, they'll have a conversation with you. Uh, they'll say something vague uh, and then spend the next 90% of the reply, A, claiming that they won something, and then attacking you personally. <laughs> Uh, according to the Donner Party, I've been shut up and slammed numerous times, but I've yet to remember any time that they've come out with any sort of substance which is disproven uh, or even answered any questions that I've had. So it's kind of fun. You know, it doesn't get my blood up, but it uh, it keeps me on my toes. Keeps me on my toes, for sure. <clears throat> But if anybody's listening out there right now from the NAACP, I'd love to have you on the show. Hell, I'll even have you to, to the studio here, and you can come in and sit down next to me. We'll crack a beer open. Let's talk about it. Why is it that when things happen, it's, it's taken to the extreme, and 
and basically uh, made racial when it may or may not be racial, but I think I think uh, you know it should be more about healing and it should be more about understanding and education than than uh, the whole thing that all white people are bad and you know racism is still alive and strong in America. Because I don't see it. I really don't. And yeah, I'm not black, and I'll never understand. I get all those catchphrases. I get it. But when I'm on a police department uh, that has minorities and women, and they're doing just as good or better than anybody else based on their own individual efforts, then, uh, you know, that's what I'm seeing. When I was in the military, uh, my unit here in Fort Hood was 70% black, and they were doing pretty good. Out of eight gun crews, six of them had black chiefs, staff sergeants. My first sergeant was Hispanic. My gunnery sergeant, black. Platoon sergeant, black. So didn't make any difference to me. I mean, they were either good leaders or they, they weren't good leaders. And for the most part, I had very good leaders. Went to war, 2nd Battalion, 3rd Field Artillery. 60% African American. Most of our leadership, black, first sergeant, black. Captain, uh, the, the battery commander, he was Italian. Of the four lieutenants we had, one of them was uh, Hispanic. The others were from West Point. You know, they're all white. I was white. I just, I think when you get in an environment where people don't care about that, when people don't spend any time, uh, concentrating on that or using it, using it as an excuse then you don't have any racism but as soon as somebody brings it up and starts putting people on the defensive next thing you know you can create chaos anywhere that's just it just it, it gets to me that the NAACP to me seems like it just creates chaos you know why why create chaos why don't we? Uh, why don't we? Why don't you do exactly what you say you're supposed to do and fight against it by, like Morgan Freeman says, stop talking about it. Stop using it as an excuse when you don't get something. Stop. Stop using it as as an excuse when you want something. And white guys, you know, stop using it as an excuse uh, when you don't get something. You know, just get it. Get it on your own. Uh, well, that's my rant for the morning. That'll get your Monday morning started, get you talking a little bit. Again, school started today in Texas. Make sure you are sent probably all over the United States in the last next couple of weeks, either next week or it's already started weeks before. Be careful when you're driving to, to work. Uh, you know, Be careful when you're driving around. Uh, make sure that uh, you pay attention to uh, the kiddos because we want them to get to school on time, and we don't want to uh, start out the school school uh, year with you know, with a tragedy on your hands. So make sure that uh, you watch what you're doing. Pay attention to the crossing guards. Stop when the school bus lights are, no matter how late you are. Leave early. Know that traffic's going to be a bear. Know that there's going to be kids running around. And pay attention. Put the cell phone down. Don't text. Don't talk. Just pay attention. Get to where you're going safely. Make sure all the kids make it to school safely and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, football season is upon us. This is the last week without football. We're already talking about uh, college games. Thursday night is our first college game. I'll be uh, I'll be watching that. And Friday, of course, I'll be in Waco, La Vega with, uh, with the Huddle Hippos marching band as I start my 12th year as the voice of the Hippo Nation. And I'm pretty excited about that. And, of course, uh, come uh, Saturday, all day, all day long, college football. I'll be in El Paso. Uh, be probably watching the game in my room at night, in my hotel room. And then Sunday, be on a plane, be back here in time for Sunday night football. Uh, actually, Sunday night I'll be at Inspire Pro Wrestling. I'll leave right from the airport and go right to Inspire Pro, so that'll be fun. Uh, I'm telling you guys, lots of stuff going on. Get out the front door, walk around a little bit, have fun. Uh, and again, listen to all of our shows this week on Armed Radio. That's starting tonight with Lino show, starting at uh, what is it, eight o'clock Eastern and ten o'clock Eastern. Straight talk with Matt Hazley. I'll be joining him most likely if I'm sober. 
Tuesday night, Valenistema comes on, 8 o'clock Eastern, for Talk Time with Valenistema. Wednesday nights, and I forgot about it, but I'm going to mention it now, Suspense comes on, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and it's an old-time radio show. It's produced locally. It's produced now with a, a lot of, uh, and they've already always got a great show. I like listening to that when I catch it, and you can reach, you can reach all those on podcasts, by the way. They're all recorded and, and posted up in Spreaker. Then, of course, uh, you've got uh, uh, my show on the air with Mike Allen. starts at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time and goes to all the way through to midnight. And this week we'll have Nal Chavez of Belts of Honorius. Uh, Lightened Warriors talking about Belts of Honorius 8, which will be out in El Paso this weekend. Plus, Cowboy Nate will be live in studio as we break down the 2014 football season. That's not to be missed. That's Wednesday night starting at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thursday night, Valenice my returns for talk time with Val. And then right after her show, the man, the myth, the legend, the star maker. Night talk with Joe Rocks with seven of this 96 co-hosts will be live on Armed Radio Global. It's a great show. It's a lot of fun to listen to. I listen to it uh, every, every night when I come back from class. I'm listening to Joe's show. And then, of course, uh, Friday night, we round out the week with some more straight talk with Matt Hazley to take us into the weekend. First weekend of football. It's here. It's finally here. That's what I'm talking about. I'm ready for it. Are you ready for it? I think you are. Well, thanks for joining me this morning. I had a good time. Got all the nose boogers out of my nose during the course of the show. <laughs> Dust down here in the Armed Radio Global Studios in Central Texas. Deep in the heart of the Hippo Nation. Have a great week. I'll see you next Monday morning, 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, right here on Armed Radio Global.